six meters length crosses a bridge of span 40 meters from left to right as shown in the figure so this is the this is the uh, this is our bridge which is 40 meters from a to b we have a, a udl or uniformly displaced load which is of five kilonewton per meters per meter and at got it has a length of six meters and is crossing from a to b as we have indicated by this arrow here so we are asked using influence lines calculate the shear force and bending moment at uh at a point a 12 meters from the left support uh, when the head of the youth when the head of the load is six, 16 meters from the left support so basically with this with this concept we know that we have to blow, draw the influence line at a section uh, and that's what we're going to discuss first and foremost we're going to discuss how to draw the influence line for a section two uh, we are going to draw uh, the influence diagram for bending moment at a section and also we can uh, we will find how to calculate the uh, the shear force at a given section and also uh, uh, bending moment at a, at a given section uh, for this case we have been given the udl we have reduced the, 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 the loading here is a udl so basically the question contains 10 marks so let's continue uh, from the question we can from the question we can uh, lubricate it or actually uh, figureize it uh, here so from the question we are, we are being told that we have a span of a bridge of 40 meters this is our 40 meters then uh, we are considering 12 meters from the left support from a uh, so basically this means the if this the total length from a to b is 40 meters and from A to our point of consideration is 12 meters. So the remaining distance from this point up to this point, it will be 40 meters less 12 meters, and we will get 28 meters. Uh, from point C to B, uh, it will be 28 meters. Then, <coughs> we are, we, from the question, we are also, sorry, we are also told, from the question, we are also told that, uh, when the head of the load uh, is 16 meters from the left support so from the left support um, it will be here up to somewhere 16 meters eh? so uh, that is the, that is the point that i was going to, de to, to, to deliver here that it is 16 we are considering uh, when the udl is 16 meters the head of the udl is 16 meters from point a so basically if we put our udl uh, at that point if we put our UDL, uh, remember our UDL is 6 meters from the question, remember our UDL is 6 meters, don't forget that, our UDL uh, is 6 meters. And then now if we know it's our UDL is 6 meters and we know up to the point C, up to point C it is 12 meters. So basically this means from point C up to the end of the UDL it is 4 meters uh, because it is 16 minus 12 and we will get 4 meters. So the remaining portion of uh, the UDL, the, rem the remaining portion of the UDL, it would be 6 minus 4 and it would be 2. Basically, if we do that, uh, we get that point is 4 and also the remaining portion of from, from the, this point up to the point C, it is 2 meters. Uh, we continue with our problem solving. Now, because we have these 2 meters, we have these 4 meters, uh, we know the, the, the distance from this point up to this point is 28. And from this point up to the end of UDL is 4 meters. Basically, from the end of the UDL to the point B, it will be 28 minus 4, or less 4, and we will get 24 meters. And also, on the right, on the left-hand left, left -hand side, we know that it is 12 meters from A to C. Then we have 2 meters from uh, point uh, C up to the end of the UDL to the left side. So basically, this mark makes us to remain with 10 meters. So from this point up to this point is 10 meters because it's, two, because it's 12 minus 2 meters. So this is, this is we have 10 meters, 2 meters, 4 meters, and 24 meters. So basically, those are our critical points that we are going to majorly focus on. So uh, it is important for us to draw the, the lines. We have to draw the lines at this point. We have to draw a line at this point, a line, a line, a line, and also a line. Uh, basically, I, I, will pref I will prefer using a dotted line for this case. So, if we do so, we 
get our dotted line at that. So basically, then we know when the, this beam, uh, when this beam, uh, when, when we are considering at a section, when we are considering when the UDL is, is, is between A, B, A, B, A and B, let's say that it, has, it is at point C. So at that point, that, that force um, divides the section, uh, divides the beam or the bridge, for this case it is the bridge, it will divide this bridge into two sections. The section from A to C and also the section from C to B. The section from A to C, it will be greater or equal to zero, up to greater or equal to 12 meters. And from C to B, it will be greater or equal to 12 meters and also greater or equal to uh, 28, sorry, less than 28 meters. And now, uh, considering that in mind, that this, this beam it will be divided into two sections. Uh, the first section is from A to C, and we will have a force here, force, force C, and let's... So this force and this force, they should be equal and opposite for this system to be in equilibrium. For this system to be, to be in equilibrium, then the, the, the introduced force Vc uh, here and Vc at the left side, to the right hand side, it should be equal and opposite. That's why we have Vc and Vc. The, these forces are equal and opposite for this, this system to be, it will still remain in equilibrium. And again, we have uh, the moment at this point, we have the clockwise moment and also we have the anticlockwise moment. So also, uh, the moment at this point, uh, we have clockwise moment and, and clockwise moment which are opposite and equal for this system to be in equilibrium. So basically that is it. And then now we can consider when the UDL, when the point load, sorry, what, when the moving load is in between A and point C. When we consider, when we consider, uh, when we consider, when the, 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 point, the, the, the point load, the moving point load of unit load is in between A and C, uh, A and C, <coughs> basically this is the, 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 the pictorial representation of the same, that we have a reaction A at this point, we have this force, we have this unit load here, and then let's say uh, it is, it is at, at a distance of X from reaction A. Uh, this marks, makes us to say that the distance from uh, this point of uh, uh, you, this this point up to the up to the point C, it is 12 minus x. Why? Why? Because if the distance between uh, reaction A up to the this uh, UD this uh, this load is x, and we know that the, the the length of the span of from A to C is 12 meters, so basically the remaining distance is it is 12 minus x. Before we go further, before we go further, we have to remind ourselves uh, how we can get reaction A and B for this case. So basically, let, let us assume that we there is a moving load, there is a moving load between A to B, and uh, actually it's at, it is at point C. Let's say it's, it's at this point C. Then we can uh, we can uh, we can let the distance from A to that point C to be X, and basically this gives us the remaining portion to be X, 40 minus X, uh, because the total span length uh, for this bridge is 40. And now, to get reaction B, to get reaction B and A, uh, we can recall, or we can remember, uh, from the shear force and the bending moment diagram, basically from module 1, uh, we, we learned that, we learned that, uh, that uh, if we, if we want to get reaction B, it will be this reaction all over. Uh, it will be this. Re it will be this reaction B. It will be this distance by the the, the weight the, the the load. This distance by the load. And if you want to get reaction at at A, it will be this distance from this point up to this point divided by the uh, multiplied by the load by the load all over the total distance. For this case, let us. Uh, consider the reaction at B. Let us consider the reaction at B. So if we take reaction at B, it will be uh, X by 1, X by this load, this unit load is 1, all over our distance, which is 40. So basically reaction B, it will be X over 4, or all over 40. And then from uh, the equilibrium law of forces, uh, we have to, we have the summation of the particle forces, 
and basically also we have the summation of the moment. But for this case, let us take the summation of the particle forces, uh, which, which is zero. So for this case, reaction A and B are the only upward forces, and we have a unit load. Uh, the downward force for this case is our unit load. So basically, to get reaction uh, to get reaction A, because we have this unit load and we have this reaction B, to get this, it will be very simple. It will be reaction A will be equal to one less x over 40. So this is our reaction at point A. So let's continue now. Uh, let us focus uh, now for this. Because we have reaction A, let us focus uh, uh, this section now. So if we focus on this section, we also apply the same, that the, 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 the sum of the vertical, the vertical forces should be equal to zero, or the, the sum of the upward forces should be equal to the sum of the downward forces. And uh, also the sum of the moment at a given point. Let's say for this case, we, 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 we might take moment as C. Let's say uh, the summation of the moment as C should be equal to zero, or the clockwise moment at that point should be equal to the and the clockwise moment on the same point. So, uh, so now let us focus on the forces. Eh? Now for this case, we have reaction A as the only upward force, and this unit load and this force uh, force at uh, this force at C to be the downward force. So basically, the upward force is one reaction at A, and we have the two downward forces, which is unit load of one and also the uh, force at C. So if we can substitute, because we have we have from this uh, concept here, this we have known that reaction A equal to one minus x over four. Uh, we can substitute this expression uh, on this uh, left hand side of this equation. We can substitute this expression here, and basically, if we do so, we get uh, one minus x all over forty equal to x plus force uh, at c. So basically, if we simplify this expression, uh, we will be able to get the force at c. Uh, if we simplify this expression, we will be able to get the force at c. So uh, when we simplify this expression, we get uh, negative x all over 40. So basically, if we want to get uh, the coordinate at any point between A and C for the shear force, if you want to get the coordinate, the coordinate of any point of any point from A to C, we have to apply this equation. We have to apply this equation. <coughs> Sorry. So we can, for, 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 for the for <coughs> simplicity case, our point of our major point of interest uh, is at point C, because that we are, want to draw. What we want to draw here is the influence uh, the, 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 the influence line diagram at a point C. So we we will take zero from this point when x is zero and when x equal to twelve. So let's say when x equal to zero. If we substitute uh, the value of zero, uh, the x here, it will be zero. The force at that point, it will be zero. And then, when we substitute the value of x, uh, when x is 12 meters, when x is 12 meters, then we get the coordinate at that point as negative 0 0.3. Uh, if we put here 12, we divide by 40, we get a negative 0 0.3 as our coordinate at that point. So basically, now if we have this, we can draw uh, up. We can draw the, the, the influence diagram for the the, 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 right, the, <coughs> the influence line diagram for, for 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 reaction at A from point C. So basically, if we do that, if we do that, we we will take this. Eh? Basically, in about you have to draw the you have to draw the the baseline. You have to draw the baseline here. You have to draw the baseline. And then after drawing the baseline, uh, take your coordinate, the at distance at zero, sorry, when x is zero, uh, the coordinate is zero. And then when x when, when, when x is 12 meters, then the ordinate is, it is negative 0 0.3. So at this point, it is negative 3, uh, negative 3. Uh, sorry, negative 0 0.3. Then taking moment about c, taking moment about c. For this case, we know that moment equal to force by distance. Perpendicular distance that is. Now, if we take a moment about C uh, and say the, 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 the clockwise moment equal to the anticlockwise moment, 
Uh, now for this case, we, we know that we take this, uh, we have this uh, uh, reaction at A, we multiply it by the distance 12 meters. We multiply by 12 meters. Then we have this uh, downward force here, uh, it's a negative, this means it's, it's, it's opposite. So it is a negative one, it's because it's an intron, and the distance between this, between the, 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 that unit load to the point C is 12 minus X, so basically the same. It's equal to, it will be equal to the moment at C. It will be equal to the moment at C. Now, basically, we have to simplify this expression. If we, sim if we simplify this expression, uh, we will get moment at C as 7x seven, uh, seven over 10. And if we, if we now tabulate the data to get the point here, we know that our, point, our major point of interest is at C, 12 meters from A. So... We can take when x is when we can take when x is zero and when x is twelve to get to plot that uh, line or the influence line for the moment at C. Uh, so if we take that, if we take that, that uh, we know that when x is zero, so basically moment at that point it will be zero. And when x is twelve meters, when x is twelve meters, then uh, it will be. 7 multiplied by 12 divided by 10 and we get 8.4 the ordinate at that point so basically then again we have to draw the baseline from a to b first you have to draw the baseline yeah, from a to b then plot this data when x when x is zero then the moment at that point is zero when x is uh, 12 meters when x is 12 meters then the ordinate at that point is 8.4 uh, then we plot that and we we get that. Let's move on. Let's move on to when, when now, when the unit load is in between C and D. When the unit load is in between C and D. Basically, this means we can. Uh, basically, what this means is that the unit load is not in between A and C. It is. It has passed C. Then we go on. We say that uh, the summation of the vertical forces or is equal to z equal to zero. The summation of the vertical force is equal to zero, or the upward force equal to downward force. For this case, reaction at A is the only upward force, and force at C is the only downward force. So this these forces are equal. So if these forces are equal, and from the previous slide, from this previous slide, you have seen that reaction at A is equal to one minus x over forty, then we can equate uh, our force at C to be uh, one minus x over forty. Basically, now to get the ordinate at any point, we have for you to use this equation uh, to get the value of ordinate at any point between uh, C and D. Uh, for the shear force, we use this. Uh, for the shear force, we use this equation. If we do so, uh, if we, sub we substitute the value of 12, we will get to 12. Uh, when, when x is 12, then force at that point is 0 0.7. And when, uh, when x is 40, uh, then the the, the, the force at that point is zero. Uh, so basically, if we do that, if we do that, we will be able to get uh, what we call. Uh, so we have to draw. So we continue drawing here. We continue uh, from A to B. We draw the, 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 these values. We have we know that when 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 x is twelve, uh, it is zero point seven, and when it's forty, it's zero. So we let us go back here. And draw. So when x is uh, 12, we have a value of 0 0.7 here, a positive value. And when x uh, is 40, uh, it is 0. So basically, we have drawn this is the, how we draw the influence line diagram for the uh, for, for, for influence line uh, diagram at a point, uh, at, a, at a section, at a section. Eh? Uh, this is a section, at a section. So basically now, then we continue by saying we have to shade, because this is a UDL, we will need to calculate this area. Remember how we calculate the area of a trapezium is a half a H into A plus B. For this case, our H is, will be in between these parallel lines. Yeah, this, uh, this will be our H. And our H1, our H1, our, our, our one, uh, A will be maybe the short uh, distance and also B will be the long distance. So basically, we have to remind ourselves, we have to remember on how to calculate 
the area of a trapezium and we can get that from the mathematical concept there. And then we have to also set this, this, uh, this area because it's, 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 it's an uh, area of interest. These two areas area of, of uh, an important area uh, because when you want to calculate the shear force at any at this point, if you want to calculate the shear force, <coughs> uh, we'll take the, 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 the load intensity by the area, by the area between the sections. So uh, let's continue because no, no, now to get the area of this we have to basically know the, uh, the this ordinate the ordinate from this point up to this point the ordinate from this point up to this point the ordinate from this point up to this point the ordinate from this point up to this point. I will go the long way for this case, but uh, at the end I will show you the shortcut of getting those ordinates. I will show you the shortcut of getting those ordinates. And then now, uh, basically, so we have to calculate the x1 as our ordinate, x4, x1, and also x3. Those ordinates, we will calculate them. So basically, before before we go, maybe before we calculate that, let us uh, finish here, the, uh, the let us finish here what is known as the, 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 the influence line diagram for the moment at a given section. Let us continue. So to get the, so for to get the, the, the moment, that we take the moment at about about C. Now, if taking moment moment about C for this case, uh, we have only one force, so uh, it will be twelve. Of, uh, that one force should be equal to moment at C. So it will be one minus x all over forty divided by twelve. Of. Basically, we get moment at C. The equation for solving the same it will be twelve of minus x, three uh, x all over ten. Then we have to plot the to tablet the data, and for this case, when x is 12 meters, the moment at C it will be 8.4, and when x is 40, uh, the moment at that point it is zero. So basically, we have to plot that again. We when remember we are when x is 12, uh, now the ordinate is 8.4, and also when it is 40, it is zero. So this is the influence di influence line diagram for the moment at a given section. <coughs> so. We also need to calculate the area of this. The, to, this is the area of two trapezium. We have two trapezium here, so basically we have to get the area of the same. The also we need so to get the area, we, we have to get the ordinates at this point. Uh, you know that we have to calculate the ordinate at that point and also the ordinate at this point. So to get the ordinate, uh, to get the ordinate, sorry, to get the ordinate. We have to so uh, for this for for example at this case uh, when uh, x as x uh, when x so x at four we have to calculate this ordinate so to calculate this ordinate uh, is when x is at ten meters remember uh, it's when x is at ten meters so we have to uh, we, we we apply in this equation uh, to get that value of that ordinate so we have to substitute in this equation because uh, it's this coordinate is in between it is in between um, a and c so to get that it is negative x over 40 uh, we get uh, the value at that point as uh, of course z sorry the value of this point as 0 0.4 uh, equal to 0 sorry at that point the value equal to negative 0 0.25 and then when x uh, so uh, when x is this x3 is when x is 16 meters so basically we have to substitute the, the second equation. We have to substitute this equation uh, because the force at this point is in between C and D. So to get that, we do that and we get at uh, that point as uh, 0 0.6 in uh, the ordinate at that point. And then basically let's continue y1, y2 sorry, when x, uh, y2 is when x is 10, is 10 meters. And this is the equation we know from A, A to a, A, A to B, A, A to C, sorry, we use this equation, so when 10, so we get Y to a 7, uh, 7, 7, we also get uh, Y3 when X, when it's 16, when X is 16 meters, and from this second equation here, we know we can get that, and we get the value of Y3, the ordinate as 7.2. So the shortcut now. I will uh, before we proceed. Before we proceed, I will show you the shortcut of getting uh, of getting this all this ordinate. Eh? To get the shortcut of getting this all this ordinate, eh? first and foremost, you have to know to draw the influence line diagram. So basically, in an 
in an examination setup when you don't have time. Know that the inference line diagram for uh, the inference line diagram for 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 a section it is of it is of this kind. It is of this kind. It's of this nature. And uh, to get this ordinate, it's very simple. Uh, to get this ordinate, uh, normally we take the distance from this point. To, to get the, this ordinate one, to get this x one, it is this distance twenty eight divided by forty. You can get that distance. And also to get distance x two, it will be this distance from this point up to this point divided by the total length. It will be twenty four divided by forty. To get the ordinate at this point, it will be twelve of divided by 40, the distance between this point up to this point divided by the total length of the, of the, the span here. And to get the, also to get x4, it will be uh, the remaining distance which is 10 meters, 10 meters divided by the total length, 40. You'll be able to get x4. To get the, the ordinate y1, to get the ordinate y1 for this case, we have to, uh, it is normally uh, the first length multiply by the second length for this case, it's the length of the second portion, divided by the total length of the span. So this, for this case, it will be 12 of multiplied by 28 all over uh, all over 40. Uh, we can we'll be able to get the, the order at this point. And to get, uh, maybe the shortcut of getting this and the uh, y2 and y3, you can use similarity and enlargement uh, or the linear scale factor uh, to get the same. You can apply the concept, uh, that concept of linear scale factor uh, to get the same, so let's now having all those, having all these ordinates, having all these ordinates. Now we move on uh, because the question had asked, the question had asked, uh, we, we we were asking the question that we have to uh, using influence line uh, calculate the shear force and the bending moment at twelve at at a point twelve meters. So basically, now we have drawn the inf the, the first point we have drawn the influence line diagram for the bend for the shear force and also for the bending moment now we have to apply we have to use this uh, this influence line diagram to enable us to calculate uh, the shear force and the bending moment at uh, at that section c for this case now we have all the ordinate we require we have all the ordinate the ordinate we require we have y1 we have y2 we have y3 we have x2 we have x4 we have x1 we have x3 basically we have all the ordinate that we require now to get what we call um, the, to get the force at c to get the shear force at point c it will be the intensity of the load multiplied by the area in between the section and basically for this case remember we have this we have the first section here and the second section here for this section it will be a negative because the value of x at negative and the second the, this portion will be a positive and remember the, the shape of this the shape of this uh, the shape of this area is a trapezium in is trapezium, trapezium in shape and also this is trapezium trapezium in shape so remember we have to re we have to recall how to calculate the area of the trapezium so that we can uh, move on uh, progress smartly so remember the area of the trapezium uh, it's half by b half h into half h into uh, a plus b for our case uh, for our case uh, now remember i've said it is the intensity of the load. So remember, uh, our intensity of the load, it, it was, from the question, our intensity of the load was 5 kN per meter. So basically, that is it. That is the, our intensity. Then the ordinate now, the ordinate, for, for, for the first case, we have to use this ordinate and this ordinate. For x1, x1 is, uh, we have to check x1, x1, x1. X1, remember, it was 0 0.7. It was around 0 0.7. It was actually it was zero point seven. Yeah, I can I can remember zero point seven, and also x two it is zero point six uh, for this case, and then plus uh, five times half of two. Uh, remember we have the this the the, the, the the here is two. Remember the first case uh, our h is four, and for this h is two. Uh, that is it. It's two by the ordinate x one, x sorry x two and x four. For x one, remember x. It 
zero point two five and uh, basically we have at zero point six zero point I'm mean, sorry zero point three. Uh, so if we do that, we can be able to get we will be able to get the force at C as ten point two five newton. Basically, uh, if there is an uh, error in, uh, in arithmetic, uh, please if there is an error in this question. You can uh, correct me. Uh, I always like to be corrected in the comment section. So in the comment section in this video, basically, uh, just comment uh, anything that you wish to comment so that we can enhance our our production, our production in this case, and will help, help you basically to, uh, will help you to, to pass your exam as well as being competent in the construction industry. Uh, yeah, so let us continue now we, because we have gotten this is the value of the, sh the shear force and let's continue for the value of the moment. Also, the moment it will be the intensity of the load by the area in between the section. For this case, it is five multiplied by the half by two uh, into seven uh, plus eight point four plus five times half into uh, four by seven point two plus eight point four, and basically you get the value of moment at C as two. Uh, 233 kilonewton per uh, meter. That's our, um, uh, our moment. Uh, if it's not, it's not per meter, it's meter. It's only meter. But remember the unit for the unit for the moment. Yeah, basically this is it. And now we have to uh, we have to summarize it. We have to basically have, we have come to the end of this uh, question. We have come to the end of this question. Now in summary, we have the golden tips. Number one, remember we have to, cal to, cal to calculate the shear force and bending moment at a given section. Number one, you have to draw the inference line diagram for the force at C and also for the bending moment at that at C. Uh, and from this, you have, we have seen how to calculate the inference diagram for the shear force at C and also the inference line diagram for the moment at C. And uh, secondly, we have to calculate the coordinate of the, the, the appropriate point. Uh, for this case, our alternate are these y1, y2, y3, x1, x2, x3, x4. Those are the ordinates of our, are the appropriate ordinate for this for this particular question. So uh, remember, we have to uh, have explained how we can get these ordinates, the long method and also the shortcut. You can use either of either of either which you need to use uh, depending on the time in uh, the time setup in your exa in exam book. Right? Number three. To get the force at C, to get the force at C, take the magnitude or the intensity of the load by the area in between the section for the inference line diagram uh, at force at C. Also, to get the mag the, to get the moment at C, you take the magnitude of the load uh, by the area in between the section uh, for, for uh, inference line diagram for moment at C. You have to take. This is the equation for the same. This is the equation for the same. So basically, go through this question. Uh, you might be surprised that you can get this this kind of equation in an examination, and it's very easy for you to scoop all the marks. Uh, my final remarks is that uh, kindly subscribe to this uh, amazing young growing channel. You can subscribe uh, to this channel. It is important to us. It gives us a credit. Also comment so that we can know uh, which area do you wish us to 